Hi and welcome back to another video by Weber Performance. Today we're looking at how to assemble a 45 DCOE carburetor. I just thought I'd do this. Uh, we were restoring three 45 DCOE 13s for a customer's um, E49 charger. That's a, uh, a, a 265 um, Chrysler engine. All these carburetors were ind independently sourced from MGBs and then we've gone ahead and hydroblasted them and fitted a whole lot of new parts as well as some of the old ones um, that were still serv serviceable. You see here, bare body, being hydroblasted gives a nice finish, very nice and smooth, brings the alloy right up to um, its former glory. Um, see here on the top cover, just a really nice smooth finish which is fantastic uh, for keeping clean. Uh, you get grease oil on those and it'll just wipe straight off just smooths out any uh, porosities in the, in the material. Here's one of the finished ones, and what we hope to do with the rest of these parts in front of us. Uh, you can see a lot of new screws, new parts, new plating. We've gone through and recalibrated the carburetors to suit the, uh, the 265. Um, so yeah, so we'll have a quick look at all the individual parts a bit more closely, and then we'll get to uh, putting this baby together. So obviously here we have the, uh, the bare body of the uh, 45 DCOE. We'll move up here, we've got a whole lot of replacement screws, assembly screws, our jets and jet holders, a lot of the brassware, uh, plungers for our starter circuit, springs, retainers, there's our float, uh, top cover, we've got our bottom plate, our um, cold start mechanism, a few gasket seals, mixture screws, uh, more gaskets, venturi, auxiliary venturi, we have lock washers, nuts, our pump rod and spring and plunger, springs, We've got retaining screws, throttle plates, throttle screws. We've got a throttle spindle. We've got a heap of parts. You'll notice here that we're actually using sealed bearings as opposed to the, um, the original uh, non-sealed items. By doing that, we're not gonna have to run our leather seal. So we're just gonna put back our bearing, the spring, retain, the spring and the retainer, which just um, is an interference fit. So there's all of our parts that we'll be putting together and we'll um, get it underway. So we've actually gone ahead and installed the uh, throttle plates back into the carburetor body um, along with the pump cam. Uh, you can normally use a two millimeter punch to, uh, to push that little roll pin through. Uh, make sure you get it in the right orientation because it can be a bit difficult just punching in and out um, if you put it around the wrong way. Um, we've got our, our screws, we've actually gone and restaked our screws to make sure that they don't, don't work loose and there you can see our sealed bearings in either end of the carburetor body. Uh, you'll see these little marks that I've actually made. Now they're just so um, I put the throttle plates back in the original positions um, and the bores they came out of and the little circle in the middle I just wanted to match up the throttle spindle to the correct carburetor body. Uh, you can see a little mark up here. Uh, you don't see those when the carburetor is fitted but it's nice to put everything back where it came from, just because um, obviously each carburetor is going to wear slightly different. So the first thing we're going to install into the carburetor body are the parts that are most commonly lost. And that's these. They're your pump demand balls and your pump demand weights. Now, they actually just slide into these brass inserted holes on each side. So one there and one on that side. The ball's job is to actually seal in a seat. The weight, which goes on top, holds the ball down and um, creates um, a bit of resistance for the fuel. So when the pump is activated, there's enough pressure to lift the ball off its seat and out of the pump jet. When it's not being used, it's enough to actually seal. Then we just get our little plugs. We'll just put them on top like so. And then it's just a matter of screwdriver and down they go. The next part we'll go is with our starter jet assemblies. They just simply drop in either side like so. A lot of the time they're not even used. Um, we'll just do those up. Next part of the pump assembly is our plungers or pistons. They'll just drop in on either side. Then we then go with our spring on either side. You know, see these little spaceship looking brass um, retaining um, discs, I guess they're called. What we do is we put one on top of the spring. We then use one of these split washers just to push down 
and it actually expands inside that groove in the top and retains that whole assembly there like so. We'll so there we have our, um, all our starter circuit um, installed. Um, next part, let's go ahead and install our pump jets. Make sure that we fit a little seal or gasket on the bottom surface. Um, so we'll just grab that and then they slide in. The flat face of the pump jet faces towards the throttle plates. So that's one. Uh, so just to make sure they don't fall out and we lose them, we'll just grab our pump jet covers, put the O-rings on. That's one side. And that's our other side. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and put our progression covers in as well, P progression hole covers. So they simply just go in either side. These bits of brass here we've actually just cleaned in our ultrasonic bath at a, um, probably about 75 degrees Celsius. It um, removes a lot of the um, oxidization with the chemical um, that we put in the water. So there we go, that's our top part. Um, look, we may as well put in our pump spill jet next, which goes in the bottom of the bowl. This is a tricky one. You can either, a little trick is to just put a bit of blue tack or adhesive on the end of a screwdriver so it sticks and we can actually put it inside. Um, I'll just save a bit of time. You won't see this on camera, but I will actually turn it upside down, invert the carburetor and put it in like that. So I'll just take it away for just a moment. There we go, I've got it into place. Now I can simply screw it in. So that's done. Um, we can go ahead and put our idle jet assemblies in and our main jet assemblies. We'll just screw those directly in. So that's those in. All right, the next part, we'll put our pump jet assembly in, or our pump rod, I should say. Um, there's four parts. We have our rod, the spring, the plunger, and the retainer. What we'll do is we grab the spring or the retainer, sorry, goes on first. It will only go one way, you'll see um, which way it actually goes. The little dimples are underneath. That goes on first, our spring goes onto the rod. And then we see inside the plunger, there's a little pin that goes through the body. What we do is that it just goes on and around like that. So we'll center that again, and we'll see that that simply goes down inside our hole there. And then we can just use a screwdriver and just, it's just a little press fit again into that hole. Now we can see that when we actually move the cam on the throttle plate, on the throttle shaft, we'll see that pump rod go up and down. Now that that's in, we'll go ahead and put in our uh, return spring. Now this can be a little bit fiddly. Um, what I tend to do is get some needle nose pliers and just hang on to the end of the spring like so. I'll then insert it, and it's a little bit difficult to see here, but I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna loop it over the cam where it belongs. Here we have our retainer. So what we need to do is pull that spring up. Not like that, but we'll bring that spring up. And what we need to do is just feed underneath, let's feed that retainer through the groove like so, through those little holes. So, and there we go, that's our return spring in place. And we can see that as we open the throttle plate, that plunger goes down and actuates the pump circuit. So that's pretty much all those parts installed. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna go along and do is just insert our spring and retaining uh, washer, uh, just up here like so. Remember we are using sealed bearings, so we're not actually gonna be putting in a leather, leather seal. Just helps probably minimize um, any friction on the shaft. So I tend to use a 13 millimeter socket, which is about the right size. I'll get up my little thing here and basically just get, need to get started. It can be a little bit tight sometimes. And you can see there that's, that's pretty much flush now. What you want to do is make sure it doesn't bind, so we'll go just past the carburetor body. So it's just sitting in there, and that's a nice, perfect finish. We'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. And that one's on as well. OK, 
Okay.